Hi, and welcome to another episode of ID Cyber Sessions. I'm Alice and this is Steve, and we both work at ID Cyber. Uh, today we have Gerard Barrett, um, who works, who is a CSOC engineer at National Gas. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, how long have you worked in the cybersecurity industry? Just over two years. Um, time is slow. I um, started there towards the end of the pandemic, yet moved along nicely. And you've had quite an interesting work history. Um, so, because your degree was actually in chemistry, and then you worked um, in the insurance industry, um, specialising for several years in fraud investigation, and then you moved to cyber. So, what is it that has driven you to move around industries? Um, well, the move from chemistry into insurance was was money. <laughs> um, I moved to the UK, uh, two thousand and eight, um, and essentially was looking for work in the chemistry area, couldn't find it, and literally got to the point where I was going to a job for going, I really need a job. And then someone looked at me and went, hey, do you want an interview? And they ended up starting working in an insurance company um, about a month or so later. Literally goes, hey, you want a job? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Um, the, yeah, uh, he wasn't quite as nice as that when he was saying it, but uh, yeah, he did literally go, hey, you've got a suit on, come, talk to me. Right, right, okay. Um, and yeah, I started doing, I did calls, it was a contact centre, so did customer services for them and then that kind of turned into an admin role and then someone from the fraud department tapped me up to go, hey, you keep sending us all these good documents that turn out to be fake, do you want to do it on a more regular basis? Um, there's a job coming up and then I applied for it and ended up doing that for just shy of eight years. Um, just, yeah, um, so looking from the more, more insurance and home insurance side of things. Um, and yeah, it was it was interesting. And then I made a few friends who'd worked in cybersecurity, and they were like, "You should really come and do it with us." Um, so was that the first time you'd really thought about cyber as a career? Was when it was yeah, your network yeah. case kind of going here's an option? Yeah, um, I dealt a lot with victims of fraud. Um, so ended up meeting someone who was big into victims and raising awareness. And I started using some of the stuff they were showcasing with the cases I was using with victims to help ease their mind because um, a lot of the insurance cases I dealt with were identity theft mm -hmm. so you tended to get a lot of people who would phone up and say hey I've got this letter from you I have no idea what this is about mm -hmm. and then you obviously need to deal with that side of things for them so that was actually a big part of what I used to have to do and um, so the more I could learn about it the better so then ended up crossing paths um, and starting to look into take uh, tell two and take five um, which are programs that were being run of you know, tell two people about a fraud case that would then allow them to, you know, keep people safe and take five is the whole thing of, you know, tell people don't panic when you see something worrying because that's what scammers are looking for. They want mm. you to panic. Yeah. So Actually, it was those kind of ways. Minutes, yeah. So, yeah. Just take five. And uh, just from there, yeah, I made a couple of friends in cybersecurity and yeah, they were keen to get me to make the crossover. So eventually did. Um, they were back what, two years ago, 2001. To, no, 2021. <laughs> 2001. <laughs> so talking about that that transition period of, of moving from investigations into cyber, was that a, a daunting thing for you? Or yes, a transition? <laughs> um, definitely daunting um, because it was quite different. But I fell in with a good crowd. They, they were happy to teach me. I You could cross-skill quite a lot with the investigation stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started out as a SOC analyst. Um, so you're doing investigations there anyway. So I kind of fell into that of a okay, I know how to investigate, I know how to tackle a problem, let's just see how I can apply it, and then put my hands up going, I have no idea what this thing is, can someone explain this one to me? Um, just where you get stuck, and yeah, there was a good team there to, to kind of teach as we went, but yeah, a lot of the investigation stuff was the same thing, you just had something to investigate, you pulled it apart, you worked out whether it was malicious or not, and then moved on from there. So yeah, it was there was a quite a bit of crossover, which was nice. Yeah, it made really things a little like bit easier to, to move to, to move over. Although you didn't actually have a very it wasn't a very fluid move either, because you had all that really bad luck with, with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, Yeah, so I decided I want, I wanted to move out for the out of the insurance side of things that I was doing. So what I did was I quit um my job. Um and I finished on the 6th of March, 2021. Uh, 2020. 2020. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was 2020. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, two weeks later, uh, we all sort of thing. So I got what is, um, you know, I was really lucky from one side that I got an entire year 
before moving into cybersecurity and I was at home um, with a young kid and got to spend a year that I probably wouldn't have ever seen if mm. I was still working. Um, and then, yeah, once the cybersecurity thing came in, working from home was there. That was an option. It was great. Um, and then just, yeah, worked on from worked on from that. So that was, yeah, it was a little unlucky. The plan was to move from one job to another without having one to go to initially. But yeah, the pandemic kind of threw that spanner in the works. But it worked out for the best, yeah. uh, with the way things kind of panned out. I mean, so you were talking about obviously the fraud investing scale, investigation skills, that those methodologies. So when it came to scaling up within the technical side, so you were like, oh right, I'm coming up against a technical thing. What have you done to sort of build those skills to be a better sort of engineer? I um, use people as well as the resources. Mm -hmm. Like people themselves are a resource. So if someone knows something, I'll generally give myself maybe half an hour to an hour of tackling something if I definitely don't know it. So yeah. I'll at least try it. And if I'm getting nowhere at that point, I'll grab someone who I know will be able to tell me within about 30 seconds to a minute of what I'm actually looking at. But I prefer to have a stab at it first. Um, and if they can't help me, they generally will direct you on to a resource. Um, so it's quite good. There's resources out there that's, um, that are there for free. It's mm -hmm. just working out what to, um, you use the people to then decide, hey, I've seen a course that's offering this. Do you think it's worthwhile? Have you heard anything about them? You you play off that to kind of go, right, they know more what they're looking at. So let's use them to judge what you should pick up as your mm -hmm. as your next course to, to pick up and go through. There's lots of good documentation out there. Um, for the, pro the companies themselves, as well as a good few YouTube videos and training and things like that. So You've done a, quite a few CTFs as well, which I know, again, like you've worked in teams for those, which is very much that kind of people angle again. Um, did you yeah. find the CTFs particularly helpful? Or? The CTFs are good. Um, definitely like done a lot of the Trace Labs things um, for missing persons, because we did a lot of OSINT work for mm -hmm. when I was doing the insurance stuff, so that kind of helped move through the more technical CTFs, so I was quite glad to have more technical people with me uh, for the CTFs. But that is essentially before I even started working in cybersecurity, I ended up running a CTF server on Discord that people had joined to then enter as teams for CTFs and just kind of learned from there and kind of people bounced off each other. So it was, it was good, yeah. No, definitely recommend CTFs for, for kind of getting in, having a, having a go. So you just mentioned CTFs and OSINT. Would you mind just giving a little bit around what those are, just for, for the viewers who don't know what those acronyms stand for. You know? Yeah, okay. Um, CDF is capture the flag. Yeah. So generally, if they get built from a technical point of view, some the person who builds the challenge will have a flag that you have to discover, depending on how you want to go in you know, way and get it. Um, and then OSINT is open source intelligence. So essentially, you're looking at news articles, you're looking you know, doing searches on social media, mm. things like that, and just kind of piecing together parts of the puzzle. Um, and a CTF as well, it, the challenge very much just depends on who wrote it. So you, mm. it's so broad, all the different skills that you have to, yeah. to have to actually solve one. Yeah, and a lot of them, because they want to track so many different people in, they will have so many different topics that they can they can go on. You'll have ones that will be JavaScript, you'll have others that will be stenography, you'll have others then that will be, you know, a photo, tell me where I was, or, um, you know, Here's a picture of a train station. Tell me the next train that's due at the station, <laughs> giving this is the time of the day. Uh, you have to kind of work all those things out. So yeah, it's, they can be quite varied. They're quite good, quite good fun. And yeah, you do work with people a lot with them because you try and have a team that has a big, broad spectrum yeah. um, of of a skill set that they can bring and go. Hey, you know, there'll always be a volunteer who'll volunteer to to go for a particular topic, be it the JavaScript or the OSINT. Mm -hmm. or and so you're kind of building up that kind of broad spectrum of skills with that. And then lo looking at your own career, you started out in cybersecurity as a SOC analyst, but now you've moved into engineering. So do you think that you've found your niche now or are there other areas of cybersecurity that you are interested in exploring? Maybe stuff that you've become familiar with through CTFs or courses and basically where do you see yourselves in five years? <laughs> this is essentially what I'm asking. I, I don't know. Um, it's one of those things I, like I started as a SOC analyst. I was happy to have work again. Um, yeah. two years ago um, and then discovered through that the, the kind of engineering side of things um, and you know, spoke to people and was like that's interesting um, so in five years time someone might have gone to me going hey you want to have a have a go at this you know see what you like and maybe I'll like it at the moment quite happy learning to be an engineer um, there's it's quite very it's quite nice they say that about being a SOC analyst it's it's varied every single day you never know what you're picking up and it was always 
there's always something quite nice to it. It's the same with engineering. You never know when someone's going to pick up the phone and go, hey, this isn't working. Can you help fix it? Um, or we need this to start appearing in our logs. You know, can you make it happen? Um, mm. So, yeah, it can be quite good in that way. Um, so, yeah, long may it continue. <laughs> <laughs> so sitting in a SOC and obviously moving again, transitioning from working in a SOC to being an engineer, have you ever been sitting thinking, oh, do I belong here? Do I have enough knowledge? You know, sh you know, imposter syndrome, essentially. Do you, have you ever experienced that? And any absolutely. ideas of how, how you've personally handled it? Or Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, as a career changer, you do have the, you know, going in, it's a bit older. You're going into a team where everyone's 10, 15 years younger than I was. They're coming out with, you know, cybersecurity degrees. And I was kind of looking, going, do I really belong? Mm. Um, and a lot of that is balanced out by the team you go into. Mm. Um, the company I started working for made sure that I didn't feel that at any point. Um, like you will have your moments, especially when you're working remote and you're kind of by yourself going, what is this? Yes. Um, <laughs> but at the same point, if you've got the people around you that you can go, you know what, I'm not feeling great. I can pick up the phone and mm. say, hi, Yes. can I get, you know, can I get as well? That can help balance things out. Um, I think the difference with when you've kind of when you do you get it when you kind of settle into the job a bit more it's easier to fight it because you kind of know right now actually things are going all right and um, you will have your moments of what is this um but you also appreciate the fact that the people who've been in the industry for 10 15 years will still have moments where they go yes yeah what is this yeah um and you're kind of going right this is this is interesting um and yeah it's but i think as well from a career change some career changes will probably feel less like an imposter because they've chosen to move career into it as mm -hmm. opposed to yes. you feel a little bit like I've stumbled in. Um, yeah. Other people who kind of make the make the plan of, hey, I'm actually going to go into another industry, they'll have a more, they might have a more focused line on what they're, what they're mm -hmm. aiming for, mm -hmm. um, which can be good for them because you might find that people who are just coming into the industry, a lot of people talk about going into cyber, oh, I want to be a pen tester, I want to do this yeah. and that. And then they realize actually maybe it's not quite for them. Um, where someone for career changer might already have an idea of what path they want to go down. Um, but for me, I stumbled in. Um, and they seem happy to have me, so I'll stay <laughs> for as long as they'll have me. <laughs> so do you have any kind of particular advice for anyone who is thinking about changing industry? Um, the most important thing from my side that I've discovered is the community. Mm. Um, interacting with other people. Um, I can literally say that I found the, the company that I ended up working for in cybersecurity while drinking on Friday nights on Zoom. Um, <laughs> it was it was a community event that people had organized. I got invited along. I got to meet people, um, got to go to conferences, got to help out with them and just learning what pe what the industry is like. Um, and that goes a long way because the industry is so, sounds so big, but it's actually quite small. You'll meet people, you know, if you get along, they, if they hear of a job that's coming up, you'll hear about it. Um, and things get pa passed around a lot. Um, and also the, the kind of the opposite side of it, if you don't get along and you go for a job, chance there, they might be tapped up to go, hey, what do you know about this person? Um, so it's it's just important to get involved and get stuck in. You learn so much as well, especially helping out. On the, I think one of my first conferences that I was involved in, I ended up being one of the admins for it despite the fact that I didn't have a cybersecurity background, I just sat remotely and just helping out getting speakers in and out of the, the different rooms mm -hmm. um, and just discovering from there and just getting stuck in and people appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always good for someone to be able to put up their hand because these things are carnage when you're organizing them anyway. So <laughs> if someone's willing to put their hand up and go, hey, I'll give a hand, just tell me what I need to do. Um, it's definitely the way forward to, to learn quickly and get to meet people because um, that definitely goes a long, long way. I would say as well, like that actually ties in really nicely to a conversation I was having with a friend the other day where we were discussing the differences between cybersecurity and IT. And I think like we kind of thought that one of the angles was really that cybersecurity is a people industry because it's about securing the people and it's 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 much more kind of focused in that way. So I think the community angle really kind of feeds into that. Yeah, no, cybersecurity is definitely a, a people thing. They always talk about cybersecurity people being the ones who will, they're the people who say no when you want to get something done. They don't actually want to be the ones who say no. You should really be going and go, hey, can we do it a different way? Yeah. Um, I think times are definitely changing because it used to be the way of, you know, it's a no when you ask for something. Um, whereas, yeah, as cultures have changed, you know, 
we do things a lot differently. We're far more digitally connected that we're kind of going, you know, there'll be another way. Let's find the safest way to go and do it. Yeah. Um, but that tends to take a lot of peopling um, where you're negotiating of uh, not quite what you wanted, but we'll get you there in the end. Yeah. Um, just making sure because the focus is obviously to keep people safe. OK, so um, part of ID Cyber Session, we always ask uh, who we're interviewing about if there's something that you would recommend to the community, whether it be a podcast or it could even be an influential person or, you know, something you follow that's, that's helped you in your career or your transition, I suppose, into cybersecurity. Um, rather than recommending particular people, find your local conference. Um, find something and go along to it. Wherever there will be a place out there search on Google will find you the nearest thing to go to um, and you'll find an event that you'll get to, to get to meet people and um, start to interact with communities you'll start to learn about what resources are doing discounts and things like that mm -hmm. um, and just remember to do the courses when you buy them on discount <laughs> which I find is uh, we've both fallen into that trap yeah, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I keep on buying uh, cyber mentor courses yeah. when they're discounted and the last time I went to go and buy them, discovered that I'd already bought them the year before when they were on <laughs> discounts, and I was like, I should probably go sit that now at some point. Um, but yeah, it's you no, know, it's it's about the the best resources, the locals. Um, mm. Go to the events, see what people are like, see what people are doing, because um, they will be your they'll be your anchor for when you're when you're kind of learning and starting out, um, especially if you're able to meet in person um, and events. So yeah, definitely say find your local event. Yeah. Brilliant Great. advice. <laughs> So thank you very much for Gerard for coming along today. Um, so if you want to find out what we do here at ID Cyber Solutions, uh, you can see us at idcybersolutions.com. Thanks again.